What is up, everybody? I got a question about consistency and how does one get consistency, maintain consistency, and I'm going to do my best to attempt to answer that question because uh, that's a lot more complex than you would think. It's not simple advice. So here's the question. Hi, Fat Cat. Any tips for being consistent? Yeah, um, setups with Edge, but is that enough? Um, he said, what do you do when you, uh, when you have, when you're like break even or you're at a loss? Um, what do you study? Okay, that's a good thing. I've talked about the, um, daily report cards in one of the, um, Slim Trady coaching episodes. Go watch that one and then go watch this other video on how to playbook stuff. Which goes into the daily report card because that's what is something you should be doing every day. Uh, as well as reviewing your, your trades. But he also says, uh, what is worth adding on the screen? Um, but that's... That depends. There's nothing you there's nothing you're going to put on your screen that's going to make you more consistent. Let's let's definitely start with that. There's nothing you're going to put on your screen that's just going to make you more consistent. There's nothing. There's no indicator, there's no specific market, there's nothing you can do to make you more consistent that is a tool or a product because consistency is with within you actually, you know. Hey, well, let me kind of try to put together an analogy for you guys to help you understand. So trading is very much like an ecosystem. It is like the rainforest, okay? <clears throat> so, with that being said, I had to turn off some screens here because that's very distracting background. But fuck it, we got this really expensive green screen, might as well uh, use it. So, trading is very much like an ecosystem. Like the rainforest, okay? So here's the thing. The rainforest needs many other components to thrive and survive, okay? So what is the rainforest comprised of? It's comprised of plants right? Funguses, animals, water, right? But there's more details within that, right? You have what? Jaguars, parrots, toucans, monkeys, ants, artvarks. I don't fucking know what lives in the rainforest per se, but there's a lot of different animals in the animal kingdom. And there's a lot of different plants in the rainforest, you got the damn banana tree, you got these other types of trees, you got all sorts of trees, right? And uh, you got all these plants, plants that put off berries, fruits, whatever, the monkeys go eat the fruits and berries, you know? And then a jaguar needs to eat the monkey to survive, the snakes need to eat smaller prey to survive, the smaller prey needs to eat smaller things such as plant matter to survive, right? You got fucking bugs and shit that need to eat on, like, maybe dead wood, like termites or something, and then you got an animal that goes and eats the termites, right? Then you got the fucking water. The plants could, can't survive without the water. The animals need water sources to drink, in the rainforest at least, right? Then you have all sorts of fish and shit in the fucking... You got piranhas, you got anacondas. You got all sorts of animals living in the water right? And those fish are shitting in there, which provides nutrients for smaller things to survive in there. I'm trying. I'm trying my best to play National Geographic here. <coughs> so then you got the plants, right? And what's interesting is like trees, their roots all interconnect and trees tend to, they, they communicate with each other. And Scientists have found that certain trees, and this is going to go in the trading, I promise. Scientists have found that certain trees 
will take care of their own saplings, their own young, through by sharing nutrients through the rooting system because the roots are all interconnect. And not only that, you have fungus on the floor. Fungus is a huge thing, man. The trees die, the fungus eats the dead things, right? So, ecosystem. So, it's not just plants, animals, water, or what have you, you know what I mean? And fungus. It's all the different components, right? Each of those animals need to eat a specific animal that if anything gets out of whack, the ecosystem is fucked. Like if you lose the anacondas, that'll throw the balance of the ecosystem off. And then one animal is going to start overpopulating and cause issues. You got too many fucking jaguars in the jungle. Well, they're going to be eating all sorts of fucking shit. And they're going to just, you know, you're going to not have enough of a certain type of animal in there. It's going to just throw it all off balance. So that's the thing with trading. It's important to have a trading system, which comprises of all sorts of shit. So I'll explain the fat cat ecosystem. Okay, the fat cat rainforest, if you will. So we have auction market theory. So that is just theory. It's just sort of how markets move across volume profiles. Auction market theory, in my opinion, auction market theory comprises of price action on a chart. So normal price action in combination with volume profiles. Together, a, a volume profile in my ecosystem cannot survive without actual price action. So they both go together. These are two components that must thrive together. I can't trade just off a profile blindly without actually seeing bars on a 30 second chart or what have you, a three second chart as well. So you have the the price action, you know, and the profile. They are both, they need each other to survive. Then you have higher time frame analysis. So I have a 120 minute chart that allows me to see the bigger picture. I need to see the bigger picture. It's kind of like going in the fucking forest and you're blind. You don't realize you're in a fucking forest. You know what I mean? You're on the ground just looking at the fucking, like a one plant or one specimen of a bug, like a grub or something. If you're just staring at that, you might get tunnel vision and not realize that what's going on in the bigger picture. And for me, a higher time frame chart with higher time frame profiles, like a three year composite profile and other composites that might span several, several fucking days, even weeks or a month, those profiles on that high of a time frame is like coming out of the forest and looking at the forest from an aerial view and seeing the birds above the canopy and shit, right? So a higher time frame is that aerial view just looking down upon it all. But the thing is, we need to go in the ecosystem to get a better look at stuff. We do need to get a good look at the grub at some point, right? So we're gonna come down, you know, a few notches. We're going to come down to a 10 minute chart. A 10 minute chart is going to be a more zoomed in. Now we're kind of like on the forest floor, right? We can see more. We can see the river. We can see the animals. Maybe it's not like quite being on the forest floor. Maybe it's like, you know, a vantage point on a cliff or a mountain. I can see, I can see that this is a forest but now I have a better look. Now I can see the river. I got a better look of the animals that are fucking moving around in the ecosystem and how it's all working. That's what the 10 minute chart is. Okay. But still I need to come down further. So if I guess if there's one thing you should be adding on your screen is coming from higher time frames down the lower. At least that's how it works for me. You may not need to do that. If, I mean, if you're just a pure order flow guy, maybe not, but 
for me, this is how it works. Then we come into a 30 second chart. Now we're on the force floor. This is the part where we're on the force floor. I get a really good look at the foliage. You know, there's a tree or there's a bush that has berries on it. There's one of those fucking carnivorous plants that likes to eat bugs. You know what I'm saying? Those things are fucking cool. Cool. I used to have a Venus flytrap. Um, so, you know, you have, now I get a good look at what's going on. Now I can see the monkey in the fucking tree a little bit better. I can see like bugs on the ground a little bit better. Um, now I can see maybe some fungus on the ground on a, a dead tree. I can see the grain of the bark on the tree. So coming down further, I, I, I got a better look of it. Right. But then we come into a three second chart on the auction Vista. Here's the thing. That's like getting super on my hands and knees and really examining all the specimens, you know, like fucking grabbing a monkey out of the tree and just, you know, flip it around, look at its butthole, you know, then look at it in the fucking eyes and say, Hey buddy, how you doing? And then fucking let it go back up in the tree or whatever. I'm sure it would bite my fucking face if I did that. If I just flipped it around and tried to get a good look at its asshole. I'm sure it wouldn't like that very much. I mean, I wouldn't. Would you? But, um, you know, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's what the uh, three second chart is. I get, I'm getting a real good look at, you know, animal buttholes in the, uh, rainforest. So now, you know, but, the, but that's, that's the thing. My auction Vista is connected to my Dom, right? And my Dom is connected to the auction Vista and the way that they're aligned is much like the price action and the profile. They both need to coexist in order to have some sort of balance. You can't have one without the other, otherwise the other one won't work out, right? If there's no fruit, in the rainforest, then the monkeys, they're not, they're going to go hungry. The monkeys, then they might start dying off because they need to eat some fucking fruits or what have you. So the Dom is like the fruit, the, the, you know, the three second is like the monkey butthole. I need both of those to go together. So, and it's not just those things go together. The auction Vista needs to look like the auction Vista because those bars have these little black lines in it, so it aligns perfectly with the Dom rows. I, I've had other videos on it. I don't remember which videos that is. But then you have the time and sales, right? That's like that's like one of the bigger trees or what have you. That's like a tree branch. That That's like a tree itself. I need the time and sales. I need the Dom, and I need the fucking um, Auction Vista. Auction Vista is, you know, the monkey. The uh, dom is like, you know, fruit and the time and sales is like a tree. The monkey needs to live in the tree because if it was on the ground, predators would get a hold of it. So it needs to go up in the damn tree. So all three of those need to exist. The tree needs to exist. The fruit bearing plants need to exist. And then, you know, you need the monkey to go up in the tree because, you know, that's part of it. So all they need each other, essentially. I'm sure the trees would be do just fine if the fucking monkey like went extinct or whatever, but you do need the monkey and the rainforest to keep the ecosystem in balance in check. Um You know what I'm saying? Otherwise it can all get out of whack. So we went from higher time frame down and then you have the price action with the profiles on each of those time frames and those all have to coexist with each other. So there you fucking go. I mean, that's that's what it is. Now, all of that shit needs to be viewed as one unit. And I'm going to probably eventually, I know I am, I'm going to end up doing another video on market correlations because honestly... We're going into summertime trading and it's becoming rather difficult because the ES isn't running the target and I'm trying to expand into other markets. And now I'm looking at NQ and Russell and I notice my setups work in those other markets. And when those setups set up in those other markets, that can key me off to if the ES is going to move. So much like 
the rainforest, your trading system and style is not going to be stagnant. There's weathers, there's weather changes, right? There's conditional changes. You have monsoon season in the rainforest, right? With heavy fucking rains, or you could have a drought. It's like being a farmer, right? Do you realize how fucking complex being a farmer is because you got to deal with fucking mother nature and you're not in fucking control you might have a drought one year and then all the crops die or you might get a bunch of fucking like invasive bugs that kill off half your crop or what have you or your crop might not yield good or it might yield good i mean the fucking this shit is never stagnant the weather is always shifting the trading the trading is always moving around and shifting as well. Like different seasons, man. Every year is different. Every month is different. Um, it's not the same market it was when I started. That's for fucking sure. It, it changes. And when you're a newer trader, you're going to constantly feel like you're behind the curve because you figure out one condition, then it shifts. And then you spend all this time figuring out another condition then it shifts and then you figure then you spend a bunch of time figuring out and then it just like keeps shifting and you 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 might feel like you're always behind so that's the thing you are you're the architect of your trading system your trading ecosystem picture it like this what you want to probably do it just might be blank like this. This is what you, this, when you get into trading, this is what it is. Nothing, nothingness. And you got to end up building this. You got to build this. You're going to go from a white background of not having shit to figuring out how to build what you're seeing behind me. You know, this, this is like the higher time frame floating above the trees, but there's all sorts of shit going on in those trees and you know, you need to know all the nuance of it. The individual plant specimens, the individual and animals, how they all coexist with each other. You essentially need to become like a, a biologist or what, uh, whatever the fuck it's called. I'm not the, the smartest fucking guy in the room here, but you know, look, look at this fucking bird, right? You got these birds. You got to understand. You got to put that in the ecosystem. These are all nuances. Like that specific bird. How many fucking birds? How many fucking birds live in here? I mean, that's probably quite a fucking few birds. How many species of fucking monkeys are living in there? Right? How many, how many fucking fish are living in there? Or what about the microorganisms on the very micro level? So essentially, you're going from, you know, nothing, nothing to happen to build this full-blown fucking ecosystem. You, and it takes time. You're the architect of that ecosystem, and it takes fucking time to build out each of the little components. And when I say building it, don't get that mixed up with, like, building an indicator or what have you. I mean, fucking Womax in the goddamn frame. You just see that black lump. Whoa. Whoa, back. What you doing, boy? I wish I could see your face. He's just a black lump floating in the background. He's just his ass end. You probably didn't notice that, but there he is. Um. So, look at the parrots. So... You know, how many species of fucking snakes... And they all got to coexist, right? And when I say build out, don't get, don't be thinking like, oh, I got to build out, you know, like uh, indicators or what have you. No, you got to understand, like reading order flow, just you got to understand it. And, and that's in its own right is like fruit. Remember I compared the Dom to fruit? Well, how many different fucking pieces of fruit are in the rainforest, there's a lot of different berries and fruits and vegetables and what have you that animals are eating in this fucking rainforest, right? So you got to understand the nuances of the order flow. You got to understand the nuances 
of it. Not only are you trying to like read the numbers, spot absorption, reloading, and the reloading and absorption could mean all sorts of different shit in different circumstances. It's like when the monkey goes gets the fruit off the tree, it does it in a different way. Sure, the monkey could keep eating the fucking banana off the banana tree, <clears throat> but one monkey might grab the banana with its right hand. The other might do it with its left hand. A monkey might get a banana off the forest floor, right? The way the monkey gets the banana, how big the monkey is, the specific genetics of that specific banana are all different. Just like reloading and absorbing in the market is always slightly different. Just like the exact shape of the banana. Yeah, all the bananas look like, you know, that, you know, like this. So, but one might be slightly larger, a little more girth on one. You know what I'm talking about? So, each banana is slightly shaped different. One might be a little more bruised at the top than the other. The monkey is going to eat that. Maybe one monkey eats it in two bites. The other eats it in three bites. So, when you're looking at, like, absorption and reloading on a dom, it's... It's not monkey eating banana, like reloading and absorption. Yeah, that's like monkey eating banana. But reloading and absorption, you got to understand the specific nuances. How is the monkey eating the banana? How big is the banana? Is he using his left hand, right hand? Is it a female monkey? Is it a baby monkey? So yeah, reloading, absorption, whatever, you know, what I'm talking about, it's, it's like saying monkey eating banana, but how? So you need to understand that nuance of it. And then you got to understand the tape. And then you got to understand the auction vista, at least for my system and how to, and now you got to make them all work together. And then you got to make it all work together from higher time frames down. And then you got to understand the setups. You know, I have profile setups. I have techniques like slips, reclaims, gap jumps, um, you know, there's all sorts of little techniques I'm using and all it's the same bag of tricks, but it's all being constructed in very nuanced ways. You know, the monkeys in the tree eating the banana with the right hand and the banana is, you know, this long and it has a bruise on top and then a jaguar walks under the tree right as soon as the monkey is eating the banana and now a parrot lands on the same exact branch as the monkey. What's the odds of that exact scenario happening every day in the jungle? You know what I'm saying? Maybe it kind of, maybe there's a monkey eating a banana, two monkeys eating a banana and then you have a family of jaguars down there, but instead of a parrot, a fucking toucan flies by. Different nuance, different scenario. Every trade is unique and nuanced in its own way. But understanding how the ecosystem, the trading system coexists and melds with within itself is, that's very important. And being able to seamlessly look at the whole thing as the ecosystem instead of just monkey and just banana, looking at the whole picture unfolding in front of you and knowing what that is and the nuances of that, that's important. And that takes, that takes a lot of screen time because maybe the monkey goes to eat the banana, but it's monsoon season. Maybe the monkey can't eat the banana because it's monsoon season. So now all the animals are hiding. So now the monkey, you know, it, go, it, it rushes out to go get the banana instead of casually walking across a branch or up a tree to get the banana. Maybe it goes and casually, you know, maybe it rushes to get the banana because it's raining really hard. You know, when it's raining that hard, animals might start hunkering down in their little hidey holes or what have you. Maybe the birds aren't flying, at, you know, because it's raining super hard. So that's like maybe volatility increasing. Like, you know, market conditions are like weather. 
you know, more volatility, it's a harder rain. No volatility, there is no rain. So understanding how the monkey gets the banana when it's raining really hard and the nuances of all that is imperative. And it's it takes a lot of time to take everything and create this system, a trading system. You need a trading system. I could hand you my trading system that I've built, but it doesn't make, mean you're going to make it work because you don't understand the nuances. You haven't been in the fat cat rainforest long enough to really understand how it all fucking works. You don't understand how how it all works out. What is this fucking animal? How does this animal interact with this animal? How does this fungus interact with this tree? How does, you know, what kind of specimens are in the water? How are they interacting with each other? How does it all work together as one large unit? When we zoom out and go above the forest like this background picture. I mean, look at that. That's so broad and vague, but that gives us an idea that there's a mountain in a valley. That's great. That's like higher time frame analysis. But there's a lot of shit going on in there that we need to zoom in to really get a good look at. And we need to be looking at it all at once, pretty much, or we can't get too much tunnel vision, otherwise we get clapped. I mean, look at this fucking uh, green bird, for fuck's sakes. Look at that weird planets on with these pink leaves. I mean, that's very unique. But th these two specimens need to coexist in this forest. So how does one find consistency? One must develop the trading system from nothing like the white background I, I showed you. And you one must create the ecosystem. One must create the different plants. One must create the animals. And one must make all of it work with each other. And one must understand that every trade is unique in its own right. One must understand how it ebbs and flows with each other. Because if I see, if I see maybe like, uh, you know, an art vark or, or whatever on the forest floor and I see a jaguar stalking the art vark, then I know that the jaguar is going to maybe attempt to pounce on the art vark and kill it and eat it because the jaguar needs to eat meat. It needs to eat another animal and the art vark could be good prey. I know it's good prey. I know the jaguar has eaten art varks because I've seen it happen multiple times. You may have not seen that. And I can tell by the way the jaguar is getting down and just waiting and crawling and getting ready to pounce on the art vark. I can see it in the eyes, how they're dilated. That jaguar wants to kill the art vark. That is a setup. That is a setup. That is a trading setup. But is the jaguar going to get it? I don't know because it could get away. It could get away by going into a burrow, right? And then the jaguar can't get it. But maybe there is no burrow. So if I notice there's no burrow around and I understand sort of the landscape around where the art vark is, and it's like that art vark has nowhere to run or hide, then I know there's a higher probability the jaguar might actually get it. Now, if I see two jaguars and they're flanking it, then I know there's an even higher probability they're going to get that art vark. But the way the art vark, sure, the art vark is maybe prey to the jaguar, you know, and we've seen it kill it. But every time it goes, every time a jaguar goes to kill an art vark, it's a different art vark, most likely. And it could be a different jaguar, or it could be the same jaguar. But the way it approaches the art vark, where it approaches it, where in the force it is, the way it all goes down is unique and individual. 
is the aardvark eating? Is it not eating? What is it doing? Is it sleeping? Is it trying to run away? The, the scenarios are so nuanced, but I know there's a good probability. Maybe like the crocodile and the Amazon River, right? Maybe there's some sort of animal drinking. Like, uh, I don't fucking know. Like, uh, what, what else, what else fucking lives in the goddamn rainforest that walks on the fucking ground? Like a fucking, maybe there's a monkey. Maybe there's a monkey drinking. Cause the monkey's got to come down and maybe drink out of the fucking river, right? Maybe the alligator gets the fucking monkey or the crocodile. It gets the monkey. Maybe it gets the, uh, artvark. You know what I'm saying? Maybe the fucking jaguar and the crocodile clash with each other when the jaguar goes to drink. You know what I'm saying? But seeing how the crocodile is stalking, I know that's a setup. I know that's a setup. What specific animal? Where on the riverbank? What part of the riverbank? How big is the crocodile? How big is the prey? What is the prey? Then I can kind of have a high probability of what's going to happen. But I am very much a biologist who understands my ecosystem of my trading system, my trading setups. I know how it all ebbs and flows with each other because it's never static and it's always different and it's always slightly different. It's always changing because if you go up in a helicopter and you fly over the, the top of the rainforest canopy, each hill and each tree is unique. Each tree has branches coming off in their own unique individual ways. Sure, it's the same tree, and up top it all kind of looks the same, but each branch is unique and different. One tree might lean to the left, one might lean to the right. You know, they might be on a hill, a mountain over here, and as I'm flying over it, it, it might all look the same, but it's all different. The, 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 the terrain is completely unique and different. Every square foot of this rainforest. So when you're looking at shit from a higher time frame... You might have a wedge pattern, but that wedge pattern is always going to be different. It's always going to be unique and different, and it's going to also be unique and different on the smaller time frames and the way the order flow is interacting with it. So, yeah, sure, wedge, but it's always slightly different. So, and then, you you know, you have conditional shifts. So, it just takes a shitload of experience to develop consistency. Uh, and, and knowing where the edge is, knowing the setups, knowing what setups work. This is why you got to study this shit. This is why you got to record and review the sessions. Because you got to learn. You got to learn about the jaguar. What does the jaguar like to eat? How does the jaguar hunt? How does the crocodile, what does that like to eat? Is it, what? how big do they get? What is it, how does it stock? How does it? You got to understand what all the animals are doing, how they do shit, what they like. And you got to understand how they're interacting with the environment and where in the environment they are and what is the weather in the environment. And you got to like be able to look at it from a zoomed out perspective and see it all moving. And you just don't want to get too zoned in on something. At first, you need to to understand it. It just takes time. It takes a lot of time. Consistency takes a lot of time. So, you know, reviewing and part of part of the ecosystem is within it and it's you. It's not just the 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 charts, the setups, and it's it's within, it's you, the the psychology. Are you over trading? Do you get tilted? Do you are you too zoomed in? Are you too zoomed out? Are you over managing? Are you under managing? Um, are you getting frustrated that in its own right is its own ecosystem within you that you need to learn about yourself, study yourself, learn how to fix the problems, um, and what have you, um, and mesh it into the trading environment. So, I mean, that's the thing. I don't know about the, the gentleman who asked the question, what's going on within you because you could be the problem you could some traders know exactly what they're doing but they're the problem um so you know that's not the answer you guys are looking for 
but that's the answer to consistency is just like consistently consistently doing your best consistently being the best version of yourself consistently displaying the right habits consistently being at peace consistently not having recency bias consistently not making mistakes consistently trading the plan consistently understanding what's going on in the environment and if you don't understand what's going on in the environment Consistently stepping away, consistently learning more about your environment, consistently adapting to the environment, consistently pushing yourself to get better at trading the environment, consistently pushing yourself out of your comfort zone to trade more fucking size. I mean, this is athleticism. You're an athlete. How does one athlete, how does a baseball, you know, batter, consistently hit balls right there's mechanics in that there's a mental game in that there's a lot of practice that goes into that and then the guys that are hitting the ball also have to play in the field so now they got to learn how to catch and throw the fucking thing you know so there's no simple answer it's just it takes a lot of time and you have to build out a system, a setup and find trades that have edge and spend a lot of time understanding what that shit is. And then consistently doing the right thing mentally and pushing yourself through review trade reviews. This is when you're doing trade reviews, this is you being the architect and drafting up what the ecosystem is going to look like. And knowing what works in the ecosystem with what. And then over time, you need to learn how to mesh it all together because your brain, your focus, and you only have the ability to take in so much information. The human brain can process 11 million bits of information per second. This is natural processing capacity of the brain, including the conscious and subconscious an unconscious mind. However, the conscious mind has a very limited capacity and it can handle anything from 40 to 120 bits of information in a second. So you can process up, up to 11 million bits of information per second. However, the uh, capacity is very limited uh, for the conscious mind. I mean, that's only uh, 4,220 bits per second. It ain't shit. So a lot of what you're doing has to eventually become unconscious. It has to become a habit. You do something so many times, it becomes second nature. It becomes a habit. And that takes a lot of practice, like learning to read order flow on a DOM. I mean, fuck, I've, I'm seven years into this shit pretty much, and... I can look at a dom in my sleep at this point and understand what's going on. But I mean, every year I get better at it and it's just like, there's no way you're going to be able to do what I do as a year one trader, because you need to learn the individual components and get it to where you're able to do this shit unconsciously to where it becomes a habit because you only have so much, um, the focus is so finite on a conscious level that you have to consistently review, practice shit. Um, each individual component and nuance until, you know, it all becomes automated and becomes the ecosystem. And, and it can just be automated. I mean, for the most part, you, you you don't ever just go to sleep in the trading and it's pure unconscious, but like there's really no easy answer for that. I mean, it just takes a tr tremendous amount of fucking time. And if you're not doing daily report cards, which, you know, I, I showed you the videos you should watch at the beginning of this. Um, these two, again, this one, 
and the other one right there. Um, you need to go watch those because um, it's very important that you're doing review because you need to be aware because if you're not consciously aware of certain things that are going on in your trading, then you're never going to be able to fix it or automate it on an unconscious level. Like for me, in my daily report cards for the last week and a half, I mean, I took last week off, but before that I kept complaining that I'm too zoomed in, I'm not looking at the higher time frames enough. So I elected to get rid of my 30 second charts and what I need to do is just look at 10 minute charts and for a week and until it starts to become automated and then I it's more of a habit because I'm a little too focused and narrowed in that I'm really too much on my hands and knees examining, you know, the specimen too close and getting tunnel vision that I need to step out because I'm making silly, stupid mistakes that I know that I know there's, I'm, I'm doing things that I shouldn't be doing, but I'm just not consciously aware of it because I'm too zoomed in. So the way I know that I need to zoom out is because of the daily report card and reviewing at the end of the session. I mean, fuck that's, and then I got to spend time to make it become automated and subconscious if you will. So I, I can't, I'm not allowed to look at smaller time framed charts for a week because I can't have them up. This is like when I tell people to do tick drills, you can't have charts up. Otherwise, if you're used to looking at charts, you're going to keep looking at the charts and you're not going to look at the DOM and learn how to figure that out as a standalone unit. And then once that becomes somewhat automated, then you can mesh the charts with it to make it one unit. So I don't know if that helped. Hopefully that metaphor made it make more sense. There's really just no advice I can give you other than review and pushing yourself out of your comfort zone and keep doing the report cards, keep reviewing, tagging trades. All that work outside is imperative. It's it's imperative that you do that shit so you're consciously aware of what's happening in your trading because you may not have been aware of it. And once you review, then you're like, oh shit, I was doing this. I was too zoomed in. Fuck man, again, again, again. Let, now we got to fix the problem. Um, Right? And for now I'm looking at other products and kind of correlating setups and experimenting with trading other products that this is new information for me. So I can only, ooh, excuse me, handle so many bits per, hell, fuck, look, this, this bird likes to eat this plant, so, I mean, fuck, you need both of those to exist, right, and then what makes that plant grow is, like, fertilizer or the specific soil, and then it needs rain and water or whatever for that plant to th thrive, but, like, I mean, that's the thing is, like, now that I'm introducing newer shit, I need to, I can get caught up in it, in, in it all and start to get fucked up if I'm not, if I'm taking on too much. So you need to be introducing things slowly into your trading and not be taking on millions of things. Otherwise you're all over the fucking place. And then when you're not reviewing, you're never going to figure out exactly where the problem is. Because it's like fucking, uh, you know, you got a bunch of holes in a boat. But you ain't got enough fingers to plug all those holes. Where, where's the biggest problem? Let's go fix that first, you know? Let's go fix that leak first, because that's, that's the biggest one. Until it's almost subconscious, if you will. Look at these fucking monkeys have these big-ass mustaches, man. Um, but anyways, just like me, they look like me. That's my spirit animal. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed that. I tried, so there you go.